Welcome to Paper Finesse. Today I'll be making this card using stamps from Designs by Ren and using the Magenta Nuance Pigment Ink Powders. Got my supplies ready to go here. Here are the Nuance Powders. This is the original 15 and you can see all the pastel type colors they have. There are now five new ones. And I use my tool in one from Spellbinders to poke holes in it. It's a little bit wider of a hole than the pokey tool that I have from Tim Holtz. I've got my water ready. I've taped this on the board using the Micropore tape. And this is my silver paintbrush, my silver velvet. And I have two other brushes I'm going to try. And that is a piece of white paper laminated. And I'm just dumping on powders. I'm, I believe I used three blues and one green. The Nuance powders are somewhat similar to brushos and color burst fisters. What they are is they're concentrated pigment and they're in a powder form. That one was not coming out very good so I made the hole a little bit bigger. Here I'm just adding a little bit of water and I'm using the Art Advantage brush I've got. It's nothing special but it's great for things like this. Now I'm going to wet this paper down really good. The first one I used was the um, Windsor & Newton by Cotman. That was the blue brush and it didn't hold the water very well. So I switched over to the Silver Velvet. This brush is beautiful. It holds a fine tip and it holds lots of water. Here I'm just applying the color in different areas, letting it run down. This is wet on wet, where the background is wet and I'm applying the paint wet. Now you can see why I taped it to a board. I wanted to be able to move it so I could hold it while the paint runs down. I'll be putting on several different layers. The concentration of color is a little light for me and I like a little more interest so I am sprinkling the powder directly onto the damp paper and see how it kind of just spreads on its own. I like the, ad the additional depth of color here. So I go through and use most of the colors again. I've got this sped up a good little bit. I think I may speed it up a little more here. I'm just helping, adding a little bit more water to some of the areas here just to help it run down. I just get the extra now. I set it aside to dry. Now that it's dry, I'm wetting it again. Notice how the background colors aren't lifting as I'm adding the water. I am adding it very lightly. Here I'm just sprinkling on some more powders. Just, I'm just building my layers of color here. Gives it more depth and more interest. Once it's dry, I put on some powder on my sheet and I'm taking my pearlized water that I made and re-wetting everything and I'll take the pearlized water and apply it just to the paint powders. This will just give it a little bit of a shine. Now I make this, pow this spray by adding some of the Dick Blick pearlized watercolor. It's a concentrate and I need like maybe a fourth of the jar to three-fourths water and I mix it up and it, does, it never clogs. It's wonderful. And when it all dries, it'll have a nice sheen. 
Now, while it's wet, I'm adding some fibers. And that's a piece of cheesecloth. The cheesecloth worked great because it's actually absorbent. I wasn't sure how this was going to work because it didn't seem to, the fibers didn't seem to be absorbing and they weren't absorbent and they didn't work. But I want to show you anyway because the technique is still valid. And what the plastic wrap does is helps it puddle in different areas and gives it more texture as well. And I just let this sit overnight to dry. Okay, time for the reveal. And take off the plastic wrap. And the fiber didn't do anything. The orange one left a slight mark, but the cheesecloth really left an amazing impression. But I still like how it turned out. It's got a nice shimmer to it, and it's got some great interest. I stamped on some bubbles. It's called Rising Bubbles, again from Designs by Wren. And I'm using a Q-tip and some plain water to try and lift some of the color off. I couldn't see much of a difference. So I decided to try a little bit of bleach water and see if it did any better. Not really. I think part of it is I'm not waiting long enough either. <clears throat> but seeing the bleach didn't do any better than the water, I went back to straight water. And I'm putting on a pretty heavy dose of water, and this time I do let it sit longer. Then go back and dab it, and it takes off a good little bit. The reason you want to remove a little bit of the color is so that it looks more translucent, like they're actual I don't want to skip anything here, so I'm just going to speed this up quite fast and finish the rest of this. But I just apply the water several different times to each of the bubbles just to gently lift some color. Now we're going to color the fish. I'm using Distress Ink. I think it's Tattered Straw, Abandoned Coral, and Cracked Pistachio. And I'm applying it with the color box styluses that I've got. And it, you may not be able to tell, but I am moving in one direction only. And I'm just randomly applying the three colors. This fish is also from Designs by Wren. She has the most gorgeous, deep, Deeply etched red rubber stamps. I haven't seen stamps as etched as deeply as hers anywhere else. Which if you've seen my flexible embellishment that I made in my first card tutorial, her stamps work the best for that method. So it's a real easy way to quickly color an image. Then I just decide where I want to position it. Here I'm using a Signo white gel pen and simply adding the white highlights to the bubbles. These white highlights are really what makes these bubbles stand out. When you use the pen on your card, just be sure the card is totally dry, otherwise you'll ruin your pen. I'm covering it with this triple thick gloss. Gloss. You can also use the crystal accents. My brush got stuck to my Pop dot on my fish. Glossy accents is what I was trying to say. But I use this because it's easier for me and it's very thick. So I get a lot of dimension because I, I just I just glob it on. 
then let it sit to dry. This is one product that I do have to keep sealed pretty tightly. I tried keeping it a bit loose so I could open it by myself, but it dried out. So what I did was I added a little bit of water. I figured I had nothing to lose. And my son-in-law used the kitchen mixer, um, an old one, and stirred it up and it worked just fine. Then to open the lid, because no one was around, I used my Hamilton Beach jar opener. I have an electric jar opener and it worked it worked great. It's the first time I tried it on this. So when you need help with things, look past your craft room. Sometimes you can find the solutions there. Now it just has to dry. I'm going to add the fish. And I'm not going to pick the card up. I'm going to leave it sit there until it dries. I don't want it to run. I considered picking it up. There's the finished card. I layered it on some Gina K cardstock and matted it with black. The product links and written instructions will be at paperfinesse.com and the stamps used were by Designs by Ren and Magenta Nuance. Please like and subscribe.